Now there are loads of ways to get fingerprints off evidence. That includes an anhydrant super glue or your basic dusting for prints. And one of the ways is a vacuum metal deposition, and that's a VMD. Now it's been used in the forensic science sphere for ages, and it's quite simple. Evidence is placed in a vacuum chamber and then tiny amounts of metal, traditionally gold and zinc, are heated and vaporized. These metallic vapors then attach onto the evidence and make any invisible or latent fingerprints become visible to the naked eye. This process was originally developed in the 1970s from the IRA bombing campaign and it's often used for items that have been exposed to harsh or extreme environments. To tell us how VMD is being used today, Anita Horvat is here to explain her role as a forensic scientist in West Technology Forensics. Um, so VMD, uh, which stands for Vacuum Metal Deposition, is not a new technique at all. Um, it stems from uh, a process which uh, used to be used to uh, produce mirrors and car headlights, for example, the, the shiny reflective side of the headlights at the back. And uh, during these processes, they realized that if somebody touched these items, so the glass for the mirror, for example, with bare hands, then uh, uh, the uh, vacuum metal deposition brought up their prints and that's where it stems from originally from the 60s and uh, however those systems those machines were uh, very big and not very user friendly uh, in a way of people didn't really have to be able to see into the machine um, and best technology started working on um, making it better, making it more user friendly, with bigger windows, better lights, light strips inside. And now we have three different sizes of systems for everybody's needs. It seems to be quite useful in uh, terrorism incidents when there um, have been explosions or bombings. Have, can you give me an example of other times it's, it's or even an example like that where it's been used? The um, VMD is very useful to use in court cases, for example, because the actual uh, process uh, does not depend on uh, the biological residues of the fingerprints on an item. Uh, it shows the chemical change of the background of the, uh, of the item. So if, let's say, an item is buried in the soil for years, Obviously, all the biological residues disappear. Um, the MD is still able to bring up the prints because of the surface changes, the chemical changes on the surface, for example. So, cold cases, it's, it's very useful for cold cases. It can be used um, sequentially to other techniques, fire cases, for example. Um, so, for, uh, as you mentioned, uh, terrorist attacks or arson cases, uh, wherever they could find an item that is not burned completely, that can be put through the system uh, to find latent prints on it, potentially. Uh, also, submerged items. So, if, let's say, a knife has been thrown into a pond or a lake, and been found later, uh, it can be still put through the system because obviously, as I mentioned earlier, it's not the biological residues what this method is looking for on an item, but the uh, changes on the surface. Pretty impressive to be able to take something that's even like been in water. Most people think your prints get washed away. But does that mean that when you're doing the tech technique, that you're taking away something, if say, if someone had thrown away that knife um, rather than being submerged, would there still be, could we still use the DNA from it? Is there anything that's been destroyed by using this technique? There has been studies done uh, to investigate whether um, VMD has any negative effect on subsequent DNA testing. And uh, the results show that there is very minimal to none effect on it. So we can say that it's 
uh, available to use before DNA testing because it will not uh, have a negative impact on it. There are uh, standard operating procedures uh, in every laboratory in what order items should be examined in. So uh, obviously if there is a fingerprinting uh, effect of the case or side of it, then uh, the item is normally examined very carefully so the examiner will not touch the surface where they shouldn't anyway. So they normally visually examine the item first and take uh, DNA samples as normal um, route at the moment and then they send the item for fingerprinting and uh, yeah this is uh, this is how it's done normally but if we think about cold cases for example those items have already been examined um, but they still uh, can be put through the VMD because the the chemical items so, so for example the fingerprinting powder will not affect or even the um, super glue fuming will not affect uh, the VMD negatively actually uh, super glue fuming could be a very very good together with VMD so they're very complementary to each other and obviously you know if, even though West Energy has um minimized the the technology behind it there are still things that can enhance prints on there um like light sources and all sorts uh, can you go through that list for me of course so um once the item has been put through the vmd process uh, all sorts of light sources can be used to enhance just visually um uh for the examiner the, the prints and also, um, after uh, the brain has been photographed, um, computer software can be used to enhance um, the print themselves for um, better detail. So, uh, lights and computer softwares can be both used. They are very good, very good with the MD. And uh, what type of equipment can you get prints from, latent prints from? Uh, lot of things, uh, more things than there aren't. So basically, uh, we are very proud to say that VMD can be used on porous, uh, non-porous and semi-porous items as well. Obviously, it greatly depends on the surface structure of the item that we examine, whether we will be able to uh, get continuous lines of the the, the fingerprint, so the um, the details. So if it's uh, a rugged surface, then there aren't really any other techniques either that could bring that print up better. But we have been having great success with fabrics, for example. So uh, if you think of uh, sexual uh, cases where then an assailant grabs uh, a person somewhere, we can put it to put the item of clothing through the VMD and be able to bring up the their um, where they touched that piece of clothing. Um, it is very good um, for intelligence purposes as well because obviously. Um, how the fabrics are built. It's not always um, possible to get rich details of fabric if you can, if you think of it that way. However, where the prints are placed on the fabric and uh, how they look can tell us more about what sort of actions have been done before. For example, if the person was pushed or grabbed. Um, that sort of thing. So it can serve as an intelligence tool for the police or the government body. Did there ever be an opportunity where you can find those rich details on, say, fabric or porous material? I have actually been currently working uh, on a project researching fabric and different uh, fabric types. 
uh, also I'm investigating different metals that used in the system whether one of them has more to do the advantages uh, on the others and uh, I'm using all sorts of donors and I'm investigating whether um, they have a massive effect on the on the prints that left on the on the items on the different fabrics uh, so that's what i've been currently working on and i've been getting very very good results if there's anything that you would like to learn about techniques about crime scenes or you have an expert that you just want to hear from then why not get in touch and don't forget to subscribe the best way to keep on top of everything that i'm sending you is to subscribe so please do until next time